Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to identify the permanent dentition by showing you the keys of each teeth. Let's start with the maxillary teeth. We have two maxillary incisors, the central and the lateral. They look about the same, but the central it is much wider in the mesiolingual direction. So if we place a red line over the central maxillary incisor and we translate this line to the lateral, we can see that it's much wider. In order to identify the right or the left tooth, both of them work in the same way. We have to look to the incisal border and the angles that is doing with the proximal side, in such a way that the mesial part makes a straight angle which is more sharp compared to the distal part which is rounder. Now let's have a look to the canines. We are looking to both the maxillary canine and the mandibular one. The maxillary canine it is much wider compared to the mandibular canine. If we place the red line again, we shall see that it's truly much wider in the mesiodistal dimension. Now, in the same way to identify the right or the left canine, we have to look to the slopes. Thus, the mesial slope it is shorter than that of the distal slope. Let's continue now with the maxillary premolars. We have the first and the second premolar. If we look at them by the palatal view, we shall see that the first premolar has a lingual cusp which is shorter and we can see overlaying the buccal cusp which is much bigger. If we now compare the lingual view of the first premolar to that of the second premolar, we can observe that the lingual cusp is much bigger and the buccal can only be slightly appreciated. If we have a look now to the proximal views of both first and second premolar, we can observe the following things. The first premolar has a lingual cusp which is closer to the cervical line, while the second premolar has two cusps which are more level. Therefore, the lingual cusp it is away from the cervical line and level with the cuspal tip of the buccal cusp. In addition, the buccal cusps are normally larger than that of the lingual cusp. We can see it in the fifth premolar and we can compare it to the lingual cusp, seeing which is smaller, the lingual cusp. When we look to both cusps of the second premolar, the buccal cusp is also kind of bigger, but much closer to that of the lingual, in such a way that if we divide by the mid axis, we can see that the buccal cusp of the first premolar it is bigger than that of the lingual side. When we look to the cusp of the second premolar, they have nearly equal size. However, the buccal is slightly bigger than that of the lingual. Now, in order to identify the side of the tooth, left or right, we have to look to the slopes of the buccal cusp. In the case of the first premolar, the mesial slope it is larger than that of the distal slope, the contrary of the canine. In the case of the second premolar, and similar to the canine, the mesial slope is shorter, while the distal it is much larger. Another tip to identify the mesial or the distal part, we can observe that the first premolar has a concavity by the mesial part closer to the cervical line. In the contrary, the second premolar has this concavity by the distal region. Regarding the molars, we are only analyzing the first and the second molar because the third has a lot of variability. Thus, let's focus in the maxillary molars first and second. In this slide, we have 
the occlusal surface of both of them. We can observe that by the mesial region we have a transverse crest. In addition, we have an oblique crest which goes from the distal buccal cusp to the mesiolingual cusp, and it happens in both first and second molar, in such a way that both the oblique and the transverse crest make a V-shape which vertex is located by the mesiolingual side. This oblique crest, it is a unique feature of the maxillary molar. Now, as they look so similar, the way to identify the first from the second maxillary molar is looking to the mesiolingual cusp in such a way that the mesiolingual cusp of the first molar has a tubercle, which is called the tubercle of Caravelli, which can be considered as a fifth cusp, but it is not functional. If we compare now the first to the second maxillary molar, the second maxillary molar does not contain the tubercle of Carbelli. Now, let's move to the mandibular teeth. We have already seen the mandibular canine. Therefore, let's focus on the mandibular incisors. In this slide, we have the central and the lateral incisor. We can observe that they are very similar one to another. Both of them have proximal side with nearly straight outlines. If we look to the central mandibular incisor, we can see that these proximal sides are almost parallel one to another. If we now move these lines to the lateral incisor, we can fit lateral incisor within the lines of the central incisor. This is giving us an idea of how similar they are in size. The mandibular incisors, as well as the maxillary incisors, have a mesial which is straight and sharper compared to that of the distal part which is also rounder. In this way, we will be able to identify if it's the right or the left mandibular incisor. These mandibular incisors are very similar one to another. However, there is a way to distinguish them. To do such a thing, we have to look to the incisal border. In this picture, we have the central and the lateral mandibular incisor by the incisal view. If we place a straight line over the incisal border of the central mandibular incisor, and then we divide that line in two, we can see that the central incisor has bilateral symmetry. And most importantly, we can see that the incisal border fits pretty well within this straight line that we have drawn. On the contrary, if we now look to the lateral mandibular incisor, we can see that this line, which divides the lingual from the vestibular part of the tooth, makes the incisal border to deviate towards of the lingual side. Actually, it is deviating the incisal border towards the distal region. In this way, we do not have the bilateral symmetry which we have observed in the central mandibular incisor. In summary, if we want to identify the lateral from the central mandibular incisor, we have to look to the incisal border. If the incisal border is twisted and deviates, was of the distal region, then it is a lateral incisor. If we have bilateral symmetry, then it means that we have a central mandibular incisor. This is a good tip because the incisal border is also helping us to distinguish the right from the left mandibular incisor. Now, let's move to the mandibular premolar, which they are the first and the second premolar. In order to identify them, we have to look to the lingual views. The first mandibular premolar has a unique feature, which is a mesiolingual groove. Another key feature of the first mandibular premolar is that the lingual cusp it is very, very small, the smallest of all the lingual cusps for any premolar. 
Thus, in this picture, we can see the very small lingual cusp, and we can also see the massive buccal cusp behind. To identify the right or the left first mandibular premolar, in addition to the mesiolingual group, we can also look to the slopes of the buccal cusp. Thus, the mesial slope of the buccal cusp it is shorter than the distal slope. Regarding of the second mandibular molar, it is very easy to identify, as we have three cusps. We have a major massive buccal cusp. By the lingual view, we can also see a mesiolingual cusp, which is large, and a small distolingual cusp. These differences in size of the lingual cusp is going to help us to identify the right from the left second mandibular premolar. We have to look for the smallest cusp and that one is going to be the distolingual cusp. Finally, here we have a picture of the mandibular molars. Seemingly to that of the maxillary molar, the third molar is very difficult to identify due to its high variability. Therefore, let's focus on the first and the second molar. We can easily identify the first mandibular molar because by the buccal view it contains two developmental groups. Thus, the first mandibular molar contains three cusps by the buccal view. They are called the distal cusp, the distobuccal and the mesiobuccal. Therefore, in order to identify the right from the left first mandibular molar, we have to look for the size of the cusp. The cusp which is smaller, it is the distal one. The second mandibular molar, it only contains one developmental group by the buccal view. Thus, it's going to have a distobuccal cusp and a mesiolingual cusp. In this particular model, the second mandibular molar has an oddity, which is the distobuccal cusp, which is larger than that of the mesiobuccal, and this is a tip to help us to identify the right from the left second mandibular molar. In addition, this distobuccal cusp has an indentation by the cuspal tip, which is also going to help us to identify the distobuccal cusp. In this last slide, we can see the occlusal surface of the mandibular molar first and second. We can see how the first mandibular molar has a projection of the buccal cusp into the occlusal surface, and we can clearly see the three cusps. In the same way, the second mandibular molar has a projection of the buccal developmental group into the occlusal surface and we can see only four cusps. Both occlusal surfaces contain several triangular ridges. However, compared to the maxillary molar, these triangular ridges they only make transverse crests, so that we have one transverse crest by the mesial part and one transverse crest by the distal region. And this happens in both first and second mandibular molars. With this description of the molars, we have come to an end of this video. I wish that you have enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.